the Living Dex Hardcore Nuzlocke. This is the Pokemon challenge where I Nuzlocke through the main series games with the goal of completing the Living Dex in Pokemon Home. Well, it worked pretty well that time. Hopefully we can keep that up. Right, in the last part we left off in uh, Vermilion City. Uh, just about to take on the gym. Uh, we had the trainers still to take on in the gym and as well as Lieutenant Surge. So that's what we'll jump into in this part. I just want to say before we get into it that I was a little unhappy with how the videos uh, looked or felt to me. So I decided to start cutting parts out and just uploading the, the main battles. Yeah, unfortunately no sound on this one because it didn't quite work out as I had hoped. But anyway, we'll get into it. We had to teach Cut to uh, birth because we lost seeds, the gloom, in the last part to the wild dog trio that we encountered in Diglett Cave. Which, you know, was unlucky, but also I should have planned for it because it is likely to happen. I think it's a 5% encounter rate. And yeah, it was a bad idea going through Diglett's Cave with uh, Backstreet the Voltorb in the lead. So we did lose Gloom. Uh, we did, however, then manage to win using our own Diglett and using Dig exclusively, trying to avoid the Dig of the Dug Trio, which it, thankfully I think only went for once. So that worked out pretty well. We'll get into this uh, lock puzzle. Unfortunately, I didn't get it on the first time, uh, first try. I think I even failed the second try. I probably could have cut this out, but I wanted to have nice transitions and I wouldn't really know to transition while I'm completing this puzzle. But I start in the bottom right this time, which is good because I think this next one is the first lock. Yeah, the first switch. And then I turn to the east and there's a second so the motorized door opens up and we can now take on Lieutenant Surge. Uh, the right shoe of Lieutenant Surge only has electric type moves or damaging moves anyway. So using any ground type is, well, well, we'll get the win eventually. So I decide, I thought first of all I'd use boulders, but then I thought I might as well just use a uh, yard diglet and use dig on all of the Pokemon. I think I'll outpace most of them anyway, and Raichu can't touch Yard, so there's no real danger in this battle, although it is a gym battle. So Voltorb comes out. Only question is, do we outspeed it or do we take a Sonic Boom? We outspeed it. Screech fails. I suppose even if it did hit, it uh, wouldn't really matter, as the Pikachu that comes out now I think is only level 18. It's a simple enough uh, outspeed it because I'm six levels above it. I might even outspeed it. I don't know actually what the base speed stats are of the two Pokemon. We hit level 25, which is okay as long as we're inside the battle. If I had been 25 before the battle, I would have been above the cap. So that wouldn't have been great. And out comes the right shoes. One dig enough it is, and we get the win. And with that win, the level cap increases to 25 for the rival battle in Pokemon Tower. So we have to get all the way through Rock Tunnel without overleveling our Pokemon, which is quite a difficult task. Uh, Thunderbolt TM here is very good because we have Backstreet the Voltorb. Uh, Voltorb doesn't learn any electric type moves in Gen 1 through level up. So we will be teaching Thunderbolt to Voltorb. Don't know what I was doing there. The, the headphones showed up on screen a few times. It'd probably also be something to cut out in the future. So we teach Thunderbolt to Backstreet. And I think I cut here straight to Rock Tunnel. Yeah, but we did take on the remaining trainers on Route 24 and 25. I think there might have only been on 25. And I think there was one more trainer here on Route 9. We defeated those. We leading Voltorb or Backstreet the Voltorb through Rock Tunnel to deal with the Zubat. We'll gradually gain uh, experience points that way because it is quite underleveled compared to the trainers and the rest of the team. So we see there, I want to get level 18 before I take on this Pokemaniac just to make the battle. I think it's a slow poke 
that the Pokemaniac uses to ensure that I win easily because there was that situation of a headbutt crit on Voltorb uh, a few parts ago. I have also got Bites the Radicate, whom I taught Water Gun to earlier already, I think through Mount Moon. So I'll switch to Bites to take on these uh, rock type Pokemon. We reach level 18 and I heal back just because uh, I want to live a crit headbutt if it comes to that again. We get an encounter right on the tile for the trainer. It's just a Zubat so we can use Thunderbolt and that will one shot it. Yeah, I'm always quite nervous going through Rock Tunnel because the hikers, I think all of them too, all of them have Geodudes or Gravelers that know self-destruct. And to be honest, I think my own Geodude's probably the only Pokemon that wouldn't faint to a self-destruct. But even there, I'm not 100% sure, especially the crits. So we see here the Thunderbolt actually isn't enough to take it out. And it's no crit, but even if it was, I think it wouldn't have been enough to take it out. But yeah, that slow poke is uh, a menace. So we take on the Pokemaniac, no problem. Now this trainer, I seem to remember as a two poison grass Pokemon. So I switched to Dreams the Drowsy to just use Confusion. And yet again, I get an encounter on the tile that the trainer would initiate the battle. It is just a Zubat, so a Confusion should be enough or oh, it outspeeds us thankfully bite isn't a dark type move yet and the confusion one shots it and we actually level up to 19 which might come in handy in this battle because a lot of the grass poison types know rock and powder moves so if they use poison powder and then wrap us and outspeed us i mean we don't really have a big chance in the battle so outspeeding pokemon especially uh, Bell Sprout is essential. We outspeed the Oddish. It's going to take two confusions. Absorb doesn't do too much. It actually might take three because of the HP it held healed back. Use a sleep powder. <laughs> so, yeah, this is annoying. I think this part I I, I played for about three hours on stream, and I I can't even remember. But I was I was put to sleep so often during this uh part it was really annoying but we will wake up eventually we mightn't be able to use dreams though on the second pokemon who i think is bulbasaur yeah crit would be dangerous now i think a crit would take us out there maybe not quite and that's bulbasaur i kind of have to switch here so i switch to my flying type pokemon that doesn't have any flying type moves gust only becomes a flying type move in gen 2 so I have to use Quick Attack. And it's good to have Woods back. I should have had Woods in the team whenever I went through Diglett's Cave. Just because it would have been great to deal with the Dug Trio. It would have taken quite some damage from scratch. But it would have at least been immune to the Digs. And I could have ensured that I hit the Dug Trio each time if it used Dig. So yeah, it would have been better if I had Woods in the team. And it could become obvious why I'm showing this passage pretty soon. I mean, I did say I tried to cut down the parts. I'm going to try and do them between 10 to 30 minutes. And yeah, I left this long part in just to give a feeling of how it was going through Rock Tunnel. This is another Pokemaniac. You have, I think, two fire types. I forgot to switch to my Geodude in the lead to deal with these. Oh, actually, it mightn't be two fire types. It might be a fire type and Cubone. But I mean, the Charmander goes for Rage, which wins the battle easily because Rage does one HP. It will boost, or it would have boosted had it not uh, fainted to the rock throw. Here comes Cubone. So if I switch to Woods, Cubone can't touch Woods. All it can do is growl and prolong the battle. So it's an easy win also. But after this battle come the first hikers and the hikers are what I'm really, really nervous about through Rock Tunnel each and every time because I honestly think not a single Pokemon of mine can survive a self-destruct. So I have to attempt to one shot them. Now, also the level cap is 25. 
So it's going to be really tough to get through without overleveling. And if I overlevel a Pokemon, I can't use it in the rival battle in Pokemon Tower in Lavender City. So I really have to watch the XP I gain on certain Pokemon because I think Birth is level 24 already. And because it is, I decide I'm not going to use uh, Birth. I was also considering teaching Boulder's Dig because uh, it could potentially live a self-destruct. So I was thinking about it, but I ultimately decide, you know what? I'm just going to use Bites the Radicate and hope that Water Gun, which is double super effective, will take out any Geodudes or Gravelers that know self-destruct. So thankfully we didn't switch yet, so we can take out this Subat with Volt Orb. And then we switch here to Bites. The front to use water gun and we head into this battle with the hiker now i usually don't look up what pokemon my, the opposing trainers have which was the case here and as you will see it's level 25 which is three levels above me so is a water gun enough it hits and it isn't and it uses self-destruct on the first turn which, uh, I mean, and that's the end of Bites, unfortunately. We also don't gain any experience points from this battle, which is another big downside to it. And since we lost it, let me see. Oh, I should have had this prepared earlier. Get this done. That's what I used to do, but now I think I do this. Yeah, okay. So... Bites, unfortunately, is no longer usable in this challenge. So I take on the next hiker. And now here, this is a little further down in the uh, rock tunnel. I'm using Ears, the Nidoking, whom I've taught uh, Bubble Beam to. And here I'm in a big conundrum. Because if I knock out this Geodude with Bubble Beam, I will gain around 400 XP. The thing is, Nido Queen, a Nido King levels up in 600 XP roundabout. So I'm considering switching to not over level ears in order to use it. And the rival battle accidentally hit the, the 3DS menu. But ultimately, I decide if I switch, I'm going to get self destructed, and none of my Pokemon will live the self destruct, I don't think. So I decide. Ears is going to have to take XP for the team. And yeah, I, Birth, I'll check the XP, is 574. So if you split that, I think both of them then might over level, which would be even worse because then I would only, I'd have to drop two Pokemon for the rival battle. So you can see I was really taking my time to think about this. What I should do, I was thinking about boulders to catch a self-destruct, but at the little HP boulders is at, it won't work. So I ultimately decide to just over-level ears and not use it in the rival battle. Which, yeah, I think was probably the right decision. Anything else would have led to another Pokemon fainting in the very least, and potentially even over-leveling two of my Pokemon, which would have been even worse. Here I still got regrets pressing it, but it, I was thinking about it for quite a while. But there was no other option because Graveler was going to self-destruct. Well, we don't know that, but it could have and it probably would have. So nothing else to do. Hit Bubble Beam and Ears will here level above the cap, which means I can't use it in the rival battle in Pokemon Tower as previously mentioned. So we'll jump to the rival battle here in Pokemon Tower and make sure that I have Voltorb Backstreet. I leveled uh, my Pokemon up on routes 8 and 12 to just about the level cap. I think not quite all of them were at it just yet. But I take on Blue Voltorb in the lead for Pidgeotto. I'm not sure if a Thunderbolt will one-shot. I'm hoping. Also the screen, the camera was, the, the stream was a bit scuffed in general, unfortunately. So I'd move the camera accidentally during one of the, the be right back screens 
and unfortunately uh, it's it moved it a little so now the, the issue here is i took out a one shot pidgeotto execute would probably beat voltorb just because we don't really have any great moves so but i need to defeat the execute with voltorb because garados comes in and if i have to switch when garados is in it's going to use hydro pump or well i don't know if it will but it happened one time to me in some attempt that I had to think off stream. And honestly, I think Hydro Pump one shots every Pokemon I have. I know it's not 100 accurate, so I could, but I'm looking for the safest play. So I decided to go into Woods here to use Quick Attack to lower it. This was a little risky. I used Quick Attack once more. If it had a crit, Gyarados would have come out uh, into Pidgeotto, which wouldn't have been great. But I don't get the crit. So now I decide to switch to Drowsy to use Hypnosis and put it to sleep. Just to get Backstreet in at full health. I don't know. It's not really very important because a Hydro Pump will knock out no matter if it's at full health or not. But maybe it would use Bite or something. So I just decided to give it at, uh, have it at full health once it comes in. So we missed the first hypnosis, unfortunately, and take four barrages, barrages on the switch. We take another four here, I think. Three. No, it's only three. Second hypnosis hits. So we know it'll take any damage anymore. It's integral also that Dreams doesn't take too much damage because Dreams is the only Pokemon I have, as you can see on screen, that resists Kadabra's confusion. So it is very important that it lives we take it out with thunderbolt and out comes the gyarados which i was quite worried about the gen one miss would be horrible also we don't get it we one shot the gyarados thankfully out comes kadabra and i think it's pretty safe to just switch into dreams the drowsy because confusion is resisted i think dreams special stat is quite good also and it uses teleport which that's not great. Disable also didn't work. A headbutt doesn't one shot it, but the second one surely will take it out. And out comes Charmeleon. And I think I'll just switch to Boulders, the Geodude here, to take it out as it is pretty safe. Into I know it doesn't have a great special stat, and Ember would probably do quite some damage, but it doesn't even use Ember. It uses Leer and a Rock Throw. Might even one-shot it. Let's see. We land it, which is quite lucky. Uh, it doesn't quite, but a tackle surely will do it. Also, I have to look at it on accidentally hit self-destruct. I'm very keen on boulders learning a new move because I don't want to accidentally hit that move. But there we go. We take out Blue in uh, Pokemon Tower. And next we head to Celadon to take on the... Jim there with Erica and Giovanni in the rocket hideout. Now I decided not to do Erica in this part just yet because I don't like to start a part uh, catching Pokemon, which I will be able to do in Pokemon Tower. So I've, I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, I think I was updating the screen. Oh yeah, because the current level cap has been increased now to level 29 for both Giovanni as well as Erica. So they both have the same level cap, which means I can't over level inside battle versus one of them. And here we are in Celadon City in the game corner. Take on this rocket grunt. I switch to boulders in the lead. Just to uh, versus the eradicate because it has huge damage output. And actually we took on all of the trainers in Erica's gym and while doing so our drowsy evolved into a hypno so let me update that on screen there we go there's hypno I think that was the only evolution although boulders did also evolve after this battle before we take on Giovanni so I'll also update that to graveler we can't get golem in the game because I don't have a game to trade with I think it was the next battle that boulders evolved so this rocket moves aside 
and we push the switch behind the poster which allows us to access the hideout and we have magically defeated every single rocket grunt in here already and we're about to take on Giovanni now the Giovanni battle is quite tough well the first two Pokemon are I think it's Onyx and then Rhyhorn and I have birth uh, so I'll just use Vine Whip on them and probably one shot both of them but the Kanga scan is really tough although one thing can happen that makes it pretty easy and that is if Kangaskhan uses Rage. Especially if it uses it at the first move, then the battle's pretty much over instantly. But you see the Vine Whip one-shots the Onyx, Vine Whip one-shots the Rhyhorn, because they're both double weak to it. Out comes the Kangaskhan. We hit level 28, which is good for the bonus HP. Now, will it use Comet Punch? It uses Rage. Rage does 10 damage. We do boost the damage of Rage by attacking it. But I mean, this next Rage will just do 15. So by that logic, this next one will probably do 20. And we should live that no problem. I do consider maybe if a crit might endanger me, but I think crit Rage would actually make the attack go down. And actually Giovanni uses a guard spec, so it doesn't even attack, which means this move would probably do 30 HP. I'm still good to attack. I am slightly worried though that I'm miscalculating something in my head. I take the rage. It doesn't even do, what was it, 25, 24 it does. We take it out. Giovanni is defeated. We have taken on Giovanni for the first time. We're still gonna encounter him twice more probably again in the next part I'm starting to lose my voice oh yeah I didn't have enough room to pick up the self scope so I waste this potion so I have enough room to take it and then I head back to the Pokemon Center to heal back and make some space in the bag so the next part I will be taking on Erica in the Celadon gym and then climbing Pokemon Tower to free Mr. Fuji, at which point we get the Poke Flute, and then is the part of the game where most of the routes open up. I think all routes of bar six are open to us then, and I can go and catch all the encounters. So there'll be a lot of encounters to add next time. I am running out of nickname ideas, so if you have any, please suggest them in the comments below. Very happy to use them. There is just one rule they have to be safe for work because I don't want the nicknames to be lost when I transfer them to Pokemon Home, which is unfortunately what happens when the names aren't safe for work. So I go back here to heal and I empty the contents of my bag before I ended the stream. There's no need to see that again. So we'll end by commemorating Byte's contribution to the challenge. Thanks very much for watching.